Hi, welcome to the Mike Page Doodle Club, and for our final Halloween episode, we are going to be drawing a voodoo king. So grab some pencils, paper, pens, markers, whatever you need. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. The important thing is that you make your mark. All right. To start with my voodoo king, I'm going to give him a hat. And it's going to be a top hat, like this. So it's almost like you're starting to draw a square, um, but each line is kind of, the sides are curved inwards a little bit and the top is slightly rainbow shaped. Uh, next, we're going to make the bottom of the top hat. It's going to be a, almost a U shape that's been really flattened and then a couple of parentheses to make the side of the hat. I always try to break shapes down into really easy things that anybody can make. Um, so always look for a letter U or a letter B or a rainbow or parentheses, stuff like that. And then you just have to figure out what angle things need to be at. Uh, we're going to put some feathers sticking out of this hat. Not a really big feather. And another one coming up. And you're definitely going to want some bones, little tiny chicken bones or skulls on the hat. So I'm just kind of spacing out a couple of bones going vertically here. And they're all connected there. I might put a few more vertical lines in between. Uh, and I might make a skull here on his hat. Definitely want something else in this space, so skull seems like a good option. This lets you know that he practices the voodoo arts. When I was in New Orleans a few years ago, I made a point to go to the corner of Rampart and Dumain because in the song, uh, Go to the Mardi Gras, he talks about the voodoo king being on the corner of Rampart and Dumain. But when I got there, there was no voodoo king. It was actually a very busy intersection, and I was slightly disappointed. Anytime I hear a specific spot in a song, I like to visit that place if I'm near it. Um, and when it, when it isn't the way it's described, it's kind of a bummer. Um, but having said that, New Orleans is one of my favorite places in the country. Very fun spot. Um, and it's a cool town because it's one of those places that uh, you're allowed to do your thing, have a good time, just uh, treat people well, and nobody will give you a hard time. I like places like that. All right, next, our Voodoo King needs a face. And we're going to make it about like this. So this will be his chin. These will be uh, the like cheek and sideburn area. And then we're just gonna kind of do that. And his face is going to be painted like a skull. Again, to let you know that he's 
a voodoo practitioner. I'm not really one for voodoo and stuff like that, <clears throat> but it's time for Halloween. And why not? Also that time of year when the age-old dispute comes up again. Is The Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? I think it's more of a Halloween movie, but if you think it's more of a Christmas movie, that's fine. I won't really argue with you. Next I'm going to come up sort of parallel to that brim of the hat and we're going to come across. shadows there and he's got his face painted like a skeleton or like a skull I should say uh, so we're going to do this and this the nice thing when you're trying to uh, make your face up to look like a skull. It's all of the information is already there. You can feel where your eye sockets are. You can feel where your nose um, is just cartilage and there's no bone behind it, uh, which makes painting your face like a skull a lot easier. So we're going to have that. But inside of here, I am still going to give him an eye, but you won't be able to see much of it. And then we will fill that in, fill that in. Now we can scribble in the eye socket area. I hope as you're watching this at home, you've got a good Halloween playlist going. There are a bunch of great Halloween songs. Um, none of which are the Monster Mash, in my opinion. Um, I would recommend like Screamin' Jay Hawkins. There's a lot of good Tom Waits uh, Halloween type songs, like Whistling Past the Graveyard is about as cool as it gets for Halloween my book. Uh, whatever you do, avoid the monster mash. And we're going to make cheekbone shadows here. And we'll come up a bit on the sides. And I'm not going full black here with the pen. I'm trying to kind of shade it a bit more. Um, these will be teeth in here. And you don't have to make all the teeth or exactly the way the teeth should be. We can kind of scribble this. Um, I think implying the teeth of a face is good enough in this situation. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of scribble all of this in, in between the teeth here. Again, this is going to be face paint. Um, so we have to give the illusion of an actual skull. So we're just kind of scribbling that in. And next we're going to make part of his neck, but I'm not drawing this side of his neck yet because as a voodoo king, he's definitely going to want a large python around his neck. So we're going to go like this. And it's going to be wavy like that, coming around. And now we're going to kind of follow these lines. I don't believe I have ever drawn a snake on this show before. How about that? 
Now his arm will be over here holding the snake. Uh, but next we'll give him a vest. And I think we'll color in what's showing of his neck so that he still looks skeletal. Uh, so we'll give him like one vertebrae there. Now, if you're a kid watching this and you're like, this is way too creepy, guess what? You're the one in control here. You're the one making the skeleton. You're the one making the guy. You could give him a goofy face and he'll be a lot less spooky. Um, I'm going kind of spooky on this one because it's Halloween. But if you're not really into spooky stuff, you can always tone it down. Uh, don't forget, you're, you're the one drawing it, and I'm drawing mine over here. It's just a drawing. It's not going to come to life. Uh, now I'm going to give him his jacket, which is like a suit jacket, so I'm going to go like that. And this arm is going to be out. And this arm is going to be out way over here. Now, this is the suit, that's the snake. Just so you know where we are. He's going to want a hand over here. Always good to have a hand to hold on to your voodoo staff. And this hand is wearing a glove, so I'm going to scribble it in. Now it's up to you what is on this voodoo staff, but I'm going to go with shrunken head kind of thing. So we're going to make another little tiny face, and we're going to make the eyes closed and with a couple of X's over them. Now, why are there X's on the nose? Or the eyes? Because they are stitched shut. So we're making almost like a mummy face here. And we'll put this in the hair, but it's just super tiny. Add some feathers to this. And maybe some like twine type stuff going around the staff. Just a little something to decorate it a bit more. And now we're going to finish up our Voodoo King. I'm just kind of scribbling in this hand that has more or less of a fist, kind of a relaxed fist. Oh, you know what? I said he was wearing gloves and to scribble in that other hand, but I did not scribble in the fingers. Um, I'm using a gel pen, so every now and then, if you're whether you're using gel pen or um, 
ballpoint pen, if you're using a pen every now and then, it's a good idea to kind of twist the tip of it against the edge of the paper uh, off to the side to get rid of any globs of ink that might be building up. Uh, because you might not realize how bad the glob of ink is, but once it gets to be too bad, it will let you know by making a giant glob, usually in the worst possible spot. Give him some buttons on his vest. And you can decide if he's standing or sitting. here. And this leg is going to be out towards us more. And we'll kind of make a shadow underneath where the knee would be. I'm running out of room, but if you have room, you could give them some black boots as well. And this would definitely be a fun one to color in, if you have the time to keep going. Um, I think I'm going to stop in just a second and let you finish the rest of it. I'm going to put him in one of those big, like, tufted chairs. I forget what these chairs are called, but they're cool. I like them. Um, and I'm also realizing I never finished the snake. I'm going to have the snake's head hanging over this way. And it's almost, let's see, what's that shape? It's kind of somewhere in between a strawberry and a diamond, and it's kind of squared off. And one eye is right here, behind where that staff is, and the other eye would be over there. If you want the tongue sticking out, go for it. You know, a lot of people cannot stand snakes. Uh, one of my best friends growing up was absolutely terrified of snakes, uh, which was always funny to me. Because, um, of course, once you know that about somebody, if you see a snake, you have to bring it to their attention. Because um, that's, that's what friends are for. You scare your friends whenever you can. Um, but I always found it hysterical how, how afraid of snakes she was. Ah, oh, man, I just got totally sidetracked. Here I am talking about the snake, and I'm doing the pattern of the snake on the chair. That was my fault. Obviously, it was my fault. It's not your fault. Hopefully, you were not following along on that particular part. Now I'm going to try to fix my chair by adding uh, some carved grooves to it. Um, I don't even know that I'm going to attempt the pattern on the snake now. That's the danger of trying to talk while you're drawing, is you get sidetracked on other stuff. Talking occurs on the left side of the brain. You're using that side of your brain for communication. Um, and when you're drawing, you're using the right side of your brain, so the two don't really agree with each other. It's hard to talk and draw at the same time. 
Um, which is why if you um, are good friends with somebody or if you're in a relationship with somebody that draws a lot, you might not be able to get their attention when they're drawing or working on something creative. And that's because they are not using the communication side of their brain. They are currently lost in La La Land, uh, having a great time drawing something or building something or sculpting something, whatever they're doing. Uh, but it's not that they're ignoring you. They literally do not hear you. Um, and that's because they are lost in the right side of their brain where the creative stuff happens. But I'm sure if you are somebody that never draws and never does stuff that gets you into the right side of your brain, it must be terribly frustrating dealing with somebody who gets stuck on the other side. So that's where the good stuff happens. There's our snake and our voodoo king. You could add some like uh, bead shakers Add a couple more feathers here. And I'm just going to bring the detail of the chair down onto this side because I never did that. And there is our Voodoo King for Halloween. You can figure out what spell he's casting, whether he's doing something good to help you or casting a terrible spell. And then you can play the Johnny Otis song, Casting My Spell, on your playlist. That's a pretty awesome song. All right, thank you for following along and I hope you enjoyed drawing the Voodoo King. Happy Halloween, everybody. Tune in again next time for another episode of the Mike Page Doodle Club. Have a great day.